So yeah, we're going to get started here. Um, I'm going to start with a word of prayer. If y'all want to join me, I'm going to mute everybody, but um, just pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for one more opportunity to speak your word, to teach your word. We pray, O oh Lord, that your Holy Spirit will be with us, give us understanding, strengthen us in the faith, encourage our hearts. Lord God, we're we, we hungry for the word, so feed us, God. Feed us from on high, that manna from heaven. Bless us, Lord, as we fellowship together. And Lord God, let your name be glorified in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, thank you all again for your attendance. And um, this evening we have a, a encouraging lesson uh, from God's word. We'll be coming primarily from uh, Jeremiah chapter number 29, Jeremiah 29, um, we'll begin reading at verse number four, and we'll study as far as we can get within the allotted time, but uh, we'll be trying to get all the way through uh, verse 14, uh, Jeremiah 29, beginning at verse four. I'm going to read a few verses and then we'll talk about it and we'll move forward from there. Verse 4 said, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all those that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon, build ye houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may be increased there and not diminish. And seek the peace of the city whether I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the Lord for it for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to, their, to, to your dreams which you have caused to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name, and I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Uh, verse 10 says, for thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you. Um, in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all of your heart and I will be found of you saith the Lord and I will turn away your captivity I will gather you from all nations and from all the places where I have driven you saith the Lord and I will bring you again into this place where I have caused you to be carried away captive all right, that's a lot, but we're going to try to get through as much as we can. This evening, the, 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 the topic we want to focus on is we want to focus in on the going through part of our life. We want to focus in on between the start and the finish of situations that we're confronted with in our life. We want to look at what's going on in the meantime. You know, when 
when things begin in our life and you know we we own the way through it but we have not quite made it to the finish line yet um we we want to see what god says about uh the hardships of life going through it but the mindset that we should have going through it okay so here uh as we look and we see we see the people of god in um captivity we see god's people in captivity we see them carried away uh captive by uh the the stronghold of the nation babylon and in that time babylon was the um superior nation they were um a, a very strong nation strong army um a conquering nation and um one thing about God, you know, sometimes we don't understand going through situations like this. We we wonder why things are so hard, why why things are so insurmountable. Like the situation is just just too hard. All right, um, we wonder why, and and the 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 reason why because, and I want y'all to hear this, and I want this this theme to continue on with you as we continue to talk about this. One of the major reasons why God allows things to get so hard or or mountains seem so high or trouble seem too hard to bear is because even before God allows things to happen, he already has the outcome in mind. Even before God allows things into your life, he all, he's already picturing how this thing is going to turn out. And he's already, he, he's already fixing it in his, his heart for you. What you stand to get out of it. That's the reason why he give us strength to go through it. Because he, he knows what's at the end of it. We don't know what's at the end of it. But he knows what's at the end of it. And anytime he wants us to give up, all right, anytime we, we stand to want to give up, God won't let us because he already knows the desired results he want to get out of this situation. <laughs> well, I wish I could hear y'all. I, I, I want to hear a man, at least one out of that. See, we don't know. We don't know when things come into our life. We don't know when this stuff going to start. But when it starts, God already has it in mind. He, he already knows. But when it starts, all right, God already has the end result in mind. It's something good for you. It's, it's something because the Bible teaches us and tells us, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called. Listen to that. The called according to his purpose. He has a purpose in mind for everything we experience. All right. We may not understand it, but he does. He already knows the end from the beginning. So that's the reason why he allows these certain things. Some things he won't allow to come in your life because he knows it's destructive. He know you ain't got the, 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 the faith to handle it. He know you ain't got the, you know, the vision to go all the way through, the, the, the hope to hold on until the end come. But whatever he allows you to go through, whatever he allows you to experience, you got to understand whatever it is, he's going to get the glory out of it. And, and, and you going to be better if you hold on all the way to the end. Okay. So here, God allowed, he didn't, he didn't allow some rooted poop nation to, to, to come against them. He allowed a strong nation to take them into captivity. All right. And we may, you know, we may look at God as unfair, but God is a just God. He's a just God. And, and he's a righteous God. He's a loving God. All right. And whatever he allows, he's going to give you strength 
to make it all the way through. Ecclesiastes 7 and 8 says this, better is the end of a thing than the beginning. All right. The going through part is the hardest part. That's the hardest part. We can't wait to get to the end. Y'all with me? We can't wait to this thing quit or stop. But what's our mindset as we go through it? What's our mindset as we go through it? All right. I'm going to say this about the children of Israel going through the wilderness on the way to the promised land. Their mindset in the wilderness was rebellion against God. Everything God told them to do, they complained about it. They, they wanted something else. When God blessed them with one thing, they wanted something else. And this wasn't good enough for us. And this too hard, God. We should have stayed in Egypt. And, you know, that kind of mentality. But that's the mentality God wanted to, to get out of them by taking them through the wilderness. See, God already had something in mind when he said, I'm going to deliver you from bondage. I'm going to take you to the promised land. But in order, but before you get to the promised land, I got to get something out of you. That's the purpose of the wilderness experience. They failed the test and a whole generation was wiped out. All right. See, that's, that's not the mindset God wants to have. Here in, in the scripture today, we're talking about, uh, again, for those who just joining us on Facebook, we're in Jeremiah 29 uh, verse 4. God said, I allowed this situation, but it's a reason for it. But in the meantime, before, uh, uh, until you get to the end of this captivity, what I want you to do, listen, verse five says, I want you to build houses. All right. Build houses and dwell in them. In other words, even though things are so bad and so depressing and, and things are being taken away, all right, we're, we're, and, and we can associate this right now and what we're going through. You know, God is telling his people, be productive as you go through. Don't sit around depressed. Don't sit around just 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 sitting, being unproductive and, and looking for the end to come. And, and God wants to tell you he, he wants you to be productive because when it does end. You can't go back to the same thing, the same way of thinking, your same routine, your same mode of operation. You can't go back to the same way of doing things after I deliver you. strongholds supposed to produce something in us. And I don't want to get ahead of myself, but God is saying towards the end of this, uh, this study this evening, it says, verse 12 said, then you shall call on me and I'll answer you. Then you'll seek me with your whole heart. See, the troubling situations ain't supposed to deter us from God or, or, or take our mind off God. No, situation like we in right now, this is a captive situation. This is a place of bondage. This is a place we can't operate like we normally operated. But God still has a purpose in mind. God is trying to transform us, our way of thinking. He's trying to rearrange our thought pattern. He's trying to, trying to get us get a new attitude within us. All right. And, and like I said uh, earlier, you know, people had uh, mindsets and way of doing things before this, this, this tragic pandemic hit our land and quite um, ironically, it is not going to change people's perception. Some people ain't going to change their mindset. Some, you know, we, we pray initially, but now we done got kind of used to being in quarantine and 
we done got kind of used to this stuff going on here and by Corona every day. And some people's mindset is drifting right back to the, their way of thinking. And, and, and by the time this is over, the, the, the same mindset is going to be there. God wants us to change the way we think. God is saying to his people, though you are in captivity, build houses. Build houses. Be productive. All right. Some of us, some, some of us have lost our jobs. Some of us have, you know, we 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 being isolated in our homes. We can't go like we used to the go. Uh, we can't do how we used to go do. But what can you do? That's the question. What can you do? Some of us say, well, 2020, I'm going to start going to church. And now the church door has been closed down. Well, there go that. that you know, hit, and, and, and the enemy that gave you an excuse. Well, there go that. You, you know, you can't go to church now. But what can you do to try to, to, to fill that void that you, you had? The reason why you wanted to go to church. But now that you can't go to the physical building, what can you do? That's what God is telling his people. Make the best out of this bad situation. What can you do? God say, you know what? Don't sit around and pray. Build a house and live in it. Not only that, he, he went on to say, plant gardens. All right? Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. One thing, God will give us a word. And I want to tell y'all, share with you how important the word of God is going through between the beginning and the end time. This is how important it is. God gives us specific instructions. But here, God was speaking through Jeremiah, the prophet. But in the midst of the people, there were false prophets. Telling the people this thing is about to be over. This thing is about to end just like that. This captivity we have in Babylon is about to be over. So y'all pack y'all bags and get ready to get up out of here because the time is near. You know, and God warned his people through the prophet Jeremiah. He said, he said in verse 8, he said, look, don't listen to them because they lying. <laughs> That's why you got to read the word of God. He said, he said, the, the, he called them diviners. That's in the midst of you. Don't listen to them. All right. And don't even listen to the false dreams you conjuring up in your own mind. Because this is not so. God said, they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, said the Lord. Verse nine. All right. I want to say something to preachers right now, ministers. I want to say something to uh, the true witnesses of God. I want to say something to, you know, those who like to share, um, you know, something that God said. Quit saying God said if God didn't say. <laughs> Y'all hear me? Quit saying God said it if God ain't told you that. All right. Stay in line with God's word. Stay in God, God, line with God's word. And, and children of God, stop believing everything you, you hear just because somebody say God said it behind it. All right. God ain't said everything. All right. Number one, read his Bible. Number two, listen to the spirit of God. If, if what they saying don't line up with God's word and, and, and God's spirit don't confirm it some kind of way, you know, you know, in, in, when, when you hear from a word from God, he'll say things over and over to confirm what he's saying. All right. So um, God warned his people through Jeremiah said, I did not say that. I did not send them. So stop believing lies. This thing is not about to be over. I'm not talking now. Don't take this wrong. I'm not talking about Corona right now. I'm talking about what God said in Babylon. Okay. So don't get it twisted. 
But they were lying and telling the people this about to be over. But God said, build houses and plant God. If it's about to be over, why he want you to build a house and, and plant a God? It take time to, for a God to grow. If he, if God ain't know this thing was going to take time, amen, he, he wouldn't have told him to build a house. You live in a house. He would have said, put up a tent or get your sleeping bag or something, you know. He, he wouldn't have told them to, to you, you know, set up something that's, that, that, that take time. He even went so far, listen to what he said. He said, take wives and beget sons and daughters. And let your sons and daughters take wives and husbands. <laughs> Getting wives and husbands and, and, and ch your children and they doing the same thing. All right. Um, that take time. There was that. So if God told them, you know, this, then again, he, he, they couldn't be, believe the lies that was being told. So again, preacher, stop saying God said, and, and quit saying stuff that sound good. Just to get people pumped up. And then want to attach God said behind it. Quit, quit want to, uh, uh, uh. Uh, 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 cheerleading squad. You want a cheerleading squad? Go coach cheerleading. Coach football or basketball. You hear a whole lot of cheering. But in the household of faith, you got to hear from God and then give it to the people. The truth, not lies. All right. This ain't, we, we gotta, we gotta move ourselves out the way. All right. And we got to we got to proclaim what thus said the Lord. God said, don't don't listen to that because they lying. I ain't seen them. Read it. Verse nine. But God did say this. And, and, and this is what we got to listen for. He said for. Thus said the Lord, verse 10, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon. Now, it, that, that's good. That's good news come from God. Because God put an actual time on it. All right. He put an actual time on it. But many times we going through, God don't put no t actual time on it. All right. So that's what we, that's, that's the subject we want to focus in on. When it starts, when it starts, how do we deal with the going through part of it? until it's over that's what we want to focus on nobody want to go through stuff but if god allows it go on through it go on through it with the right attitude be productive going through it if you don't pray like you ought to god will allow some stronghold to come in your life some calamity to happen and, and, and what you need to do is learn how to pray now while you're going through. What can you do going through? Complaining ain't going to help it. And, and God has been giving me a lot of word about complaining lately. And um, what the people of God cannot do during this, this time now is complain. What can you do productively? What can you do that will bring God glory during this time? What can you do to be a better person? Because this is not the end. This is the, this is the middle. Y'all remember we did paragraphs in, in school. Uh, there was a beginning, a middle, and then a, a end, which, which was the conclusion. The goodness of God says this now. The reason why these people... Uh, back to the children of Israel that was on, you know, that came out of Egypt. The reason why they 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 got stuck in the middle, it started when they came through the Red Sea. They was in the wilderness. It started there. They got stuck in the middle because of their complaining, their mindset. Their heart didn't draw near to God. God had purpose. He wanted to bring them to the promised land, but he wanted to bring them there in the right mind because they would have got in the promised land. 
with a mindset still stuck in Egypt. And they would have messed up. So God, what happened was God allowed them to stay in the middle. So they kept going in a circle. They kept going in a circle. How many of y'all out there right now keep doing 360s? How many of y'all on a merry-go-round? God allowed something to come in your life to produce something. Faith. Uh, strength, he wanted to produce some, or he wanted to take some out of you that, that didn't belong, a mindset or lack of faith, fear, whatever, whatever God's purpose was for you, for allowing that into your life. How many of us didn't get it? And, and out of love, God pushed the reset button. I start over because I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you what I promised you until you get it right. How many of us are going in circles right now? The closer we get to the end, it seems like we just can't get over that hump and we start all the way back over again. <laughs> Trust God this evening. That's what I want you to do. Trust God. <laughs> Somebody said me. <laughs> Trust God. All right. Trust God. He, he got your best interest in, in, at heart. God said plant gardens and, 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 and listen to this. Not only plant them, eat the fruit. In other words, everything you do for God is going to be productive. He's going to make sure he provides for you. As you go through, if you trust him, if you trust him, he's going to make sure everything is all right for you. He said, eat the fruit thereof. He said, be productive. He said, reproduce people. Ain't that something? God is telling his people in captivity to reproduce. This go deeper than we, 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 we. Well, you know, we're not just saying God just wanted them to have children. God wanted to put faith in these children, even in captivity. How deep is that? You know, I I talk about my grandma. If you if you listen to me a lot, especially in ministry, I, I, I talk about my grandma a lot because she deposited a whole lot of faith in me. She planted seeds that that grew and developed over time is things she prayed and she prayed about over our lives coming up that she never did witness, but it still came to pass. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And one thing she, she, she did, she didn't take it for granted because I, I, I wasn't always saved, but she didn't take it for granted. She planted in us. Seeds of faith. Even when we were sinful and, and out of the will of God, she planted in us. Y'all with me? And, and even after she departed, this is how faithful God is. He said, I'll bless you through, even through a thousand generations of them that love me and keep my commandments. So don't ever give up hope on your children. They are a gift from God. And when you go, they will be here if it's God's will. You know, the pattern, you know, we leave before our children if it's God's will. And what you want to leave behind is a legacy of faith and hope. You want to leave behind you a people that's going to glorify God, that's going to give God glory, that's going to praise the one and true, true and living God. All right. I ain't got no clock around me, so I need to make sure. Okay, we good. So God was telling them, in the midst of this, this captivity, reproduce. <laughs> because look, some of them, after 70 years, some of those people wasn't going to be around after 70 years. God knew that. But he was going to visit them after 70 years. And, and when he visited them, what he wanted them to do was make sure it was going to be somebody 
left around, a remnant that was, that was there to carry on the faith. Deposit into your children. Stop telling them what they can't be and what they ain't and, and, and you're just like your daddy and all that kind of stuff. You know, you're just like your mammy. Y'all remember older folks used to say mammy. That was a bad word. <laughs> but anyway, stop saying stuff like that. At their worst, God still can use your children. If you are a person of faith, you know where you came from. You weren't always holy and righteous and, and, and in line with God's word. No, you weren't. But God entrusted you with children. He saved you and entrusted you with children, preaching to them. Speak a word into them. Pray for them, even at their worst. Because God, look, look what God said. Verse 10 said, after 70 years be accomplished. Y'all hear that word accomplished? When, when, you are, when you are doing something with purpose, you accomplish it. You accomplish something. Many of us just doing stuff, just, just doing stuff. But when you got a goal in mind and you work toward it, you get to the end. It's, it's like it's an accomplishment. <laughs> God said, I'm doing something in you. And after my divine time and after I say it's over, I want to be able to say I've accomplished something in you. All this work, all this keeping you safe from hurt, harm, and danger, all this grace I'm giving you, all this word I'm depositing in you, all this favor I got on your life, God is saying after all has been said and done, when you started, went through it, and at the end of it now, I want to feel like I accomplished something. Jesus on the cross, he died for our sin. He didn't just hang there and die just to be dying. He died for the sins of the whole world. And, and in, in my sanctified mind, I want to, I, I know he want to feel like I died for your sins. I want to feel like I accomplished something. I ain't just die in vain. <laughs> Lord have mercy. After 70 years be accomplished, I'll visit you. And I'll perform my good word towards you and causing you to return to this place. Now, if, if we read back in verse uh, four, he said uh, he was speaking to his people. He said unto all the captives carried away who I caused to be carried away. I put this thing into action. I allowed Babylon to take you over. All right. God don't bring evil into our life, but he will allow the enemy to have a certain degree of power or authority, but they can, the enemy can't go but so far with God's people. All right. Even when Job was, well, you know, attacked by the enemy, the enemy had to go through God first. <laughs> See, when you covered by God, the enemy can't get to you unless God gave him permission. And, 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 and God said, you can do, you can do what you will with him. But you don't don't take his life. You can't take his life because I ain't gave you that authority yet. But I know he won't curse me. I know he won't turn his back on me. I trust my servant Job. Can God say that about us this evening? I trust you with my word. I trust you with my favor, with my grace and mercy. I trust you with it. I know you're going to love your enemy. I know you're going to pray for them that despitefully use you. I know you're going to do what thus said the Lord. I know you're going to make right decisions. I know you're going to give me glory and not try to take it for yourself. I know you're going to trust me when your times get hard. I know you're going to do it. I got enough faith in you. Don't you know God got faith in us? He entrusts things with us. God say, behold, I give you power. I'll visit you after 70 years. If you ever had a visitor that come over, you know, that come over and they drink up all your drink and they eat up all your food and they, they don't put nothing into your life. They just, 
take and destroy. But God said, I'm going to visit you and I'm going to perform something in your life. That's good news. I guess that's part of my vocabulary now. Um, that's good news. I'll be trying to leave y'all with good news. <laughs> that's good news. God just ain't going to come visit you with, without some kind of purpose and power with him. He going to do something when he come visit you. That's good news today. All right. Go on through what, what, what God allows in your life. Go on through it. After all is said and done, number one, God wants his name glorified. Going through whatever you're going through, God, number one, wants his name glorified. That's the reason why many times things are so hard in our life. It, it's because God knows you can't fix it and he don't want nobody else fixing it for you except him. That's the reason why, you know, Babylon was the stronghold of God's people. A nation that they couldn't conquer at the time. A, a, a nation they, they wasn't fit to go up against at the time. God allowed it because when, all, when, when they get through it and get to the end, he wants them to know who brought them through it. <laughs> They couldn't do it on them own, they, on their own. It was going to be God's power that bring them out. All right. Number two, God wants you to be a better person after you have gone through what you, you go through. The captivity, the, the calamity, the trouble, the trial, the temptation, whatever. God wants you to be a better person. And, and number three, God wants everybody else to know through your life as a living witness that God is in charge. <laughs> Ain't that something? God want to bring you through so that others may see and know that he is the one true God. That he is able to to do anything but fail. That he can bring you through. Alright. He said. I perform my good word towards you. And causing you to return. To this place. Alright. Verse 11 says this. For I know the thoughts. That I think towards you. Said the Lord. Thoughts of peace. And not of evil. Listen to this. To give you an expected end. <laughs> Why are we worried so about something that God already has worked out on our behalf? We can't see the end. But God knows the end from the beginning. We don't know how it's going to turn out. But God wants you to trust him in the midst of it. In the meantime, it done started now. Ain't nothing you can do about it. But what you can do is go through it with a hopeful spirit. You can go through it full of faith, full of joy, knowing that God has an expected end. He got, he got an expected end. He got the thing already worked out. He already got you in mind at the end. You know what? Jesus suffered tremendously on that Friday. They nailed him to a cross. He hung on that cross from the third to the ninth hour. All right. He was in so much pain. But the Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Let me let me pull this. I, I want to pull this this this. I want to pull this out. Jesus wasn't focused on Friday. 
Jesus was focused on Sunday morning for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross because he had so much hope in the resurrection. What was going to happen on that Sunday morning? He wasn't consumed with what was going on on that Friday, the pain, the suffering, the heartache, the blood streaming down. Everybody doubting him and, you know, even he even had the, the pain of, of, of the, the flesh saying, come down. The temptation to come down. He said, I could, I could have a legion of angels come destroy everybody. But you know what? Love hung him on that cross. I see Sunday morning. This pain ain't, compa ain't gonna compare to Sunday morning. <laughs> The Bible te teaches us uh, the glory that's going to be revealed at the end. Is the, 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 the pain we're enduring right now is not to be compared to the glory that's in the end. That's why we got to keep the faith. Stop focusing on the, the isolation. Don't focus on the losing your job. Don't, don't focus on the, the, the health crisis you may be going through. Don't focus on people that done walk down and left you or backstab you or talk about you behind your back. Don't focus on all the calamity, all the bad. All right. Focus on the end. You don't know the end yet. But you know it's going to work towards your favor. You know it's going to be good because all of these things work for our good. Stop focusing Focusing so much on, on the bad. It's going to be better after a while. It's going to be good after a while. It's going to be worth it after a while. God is producing something in you. He said, I know the thoughts I think towards you. You may not know it. But listen to this. We, we say a lot too. And that's why we got to study our Bible. We got to. Not only read the verse, but we got to read the verses prior to, and we got to read the verses afterward, and we got to, you know, go through the Bible prayerfully and connect everything that 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 subject is talking about from Genesis to Revelation. Don't just stay on one verse, all right? So we say, and and, and the Bible does say, eyes have not seen. I, I taught y'all this at uh, Saint Peter. Ears have not heard. Neither have entered into the hearts of man the things that God has for them that, you know, that love him, that serve him, that, that, that he, it, it ain't entered into the heart of man. But you read the next verse and say, God has revealed them to us by his spirit. We may not know, know the exact day when our deliverance comes. We may not know the exact hour. We may not know exactly how he going to turn it around. But he has revealed it, revealed it to us by his spirit that he is going to do it. He has revealed it to us that he is going to do it. And that produces hope in us. That produces faith in us. Say, so I'm not going to give up because... The end is going to be better than the beginning. What I'm going through now is not compared to the glory that's at the end of this. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I know the thoughts I think towards you. God saying, look, I got thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expecting end. He said, when I bring you to the end, listen to what God is trying to produce. And, and I believe our time is about up. But look, look at what God is trying to produce. He said, then, when at the expected end, then, verse 12, shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you or I will listen attentively to you. 
Then you will get serious about your prayer life. And you, he said, then you will call on me and you shall go and pray unto me and I listen. And you shall seek me and find me when I, sh when you shall search for me with all of your heart. See, see, a lot of us just getting by. A lot of us just doing what's necessary. A lot of us just got a form of religion. That's why we ain't got no commitment. We ain't doing nothing but laying in the bed, doing nothing. I, and I ain't going to know. I ain't going to tell you what to do with your time. Yeah, it's your time. You can do it, what you want to do. But for a child of God that wants to get closer to Jesus, a child of God that wants to understand his purpose in this life, a child of God that want to get, you know, hear from God and, 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 and listen to what God wants and, and get what God wants from him and allow God to use him, a child of God will seek him and search for him with all your heart. You will take time to, to open a Bible. You will take time to sit under somebody teaching. You will take time to, you know, if you can't go to the church house, the, the sanctuary, you will, you will take time to watch a video of a preacher. I ain't talking about me. I, it, it's a whole lot of virtual preachers and teaching. But make sure you're listening to them and they preaching the word of God. Y'all with me? You will take time to pray. And God is saying, after I bring you out of this calamity, after I bring you out, then you will seek me and you will find me. When you search for me with all of your heart. And I'll be found of you. You ever, How many of y'all ever look for something and, and, and you did your best to find it? And you just couldn't find it. And you quit. You just quit. I ain't, you know, I'm, I ain't talking about nothing. I'm just talking in general, like your keys or something, your wallet. You looked everywhere for it. You looked everywhere you thought it would be and you couldn't find it. And you just quit. But God said, I want you to search for me. You know, a lot of us just look like children. You tell them looking there for something. They just look. They go up, step in the doorway and look. And if they don't see it, they come, I can't find it. All they did was look. They ain't search. When you're trying to find something bad enough, you'll flip the pillars over. You'll get down on your knee. It don't matter if you got arthritis in your knee. You'll get down there and look under that, that couch. You'll look places where it probably ain't. But you, you ain't going to count no options out. You're searching for it now. And see, when you want God bad enough, when you want something from God bad enough, you're not just going to look. You're not just going to attend a church service and go home the same way. You're not just going to open your Bible and read Psalm 23. You're going to search for him. And you're going to seek after him. And God is saying, then you will find me. When you search for me with all of your heart. Well, I almost... Um, I almost preached today. I got kind of excited. <laughs> Supposed to be Bible study, but anyway, when when I think about how the the fact that God has expect expectations for me, you know, people will write you off, say you ain't no good, you ain't never gonna be no good. God got expectations for you. He's producing something in you. He's working things out into your your life. So don't allow. Captive situation. Don't allow uh, captivity. Don't allow trouble in your life. Don't allow uh, lack or going without cause you or rob you of your joy and your peace and your hope in God. Don't allow bad mindsets or mindsets that's not of God to, to come into your mind just because you're going through hard times. Don't allow bad situations to create hopelessness or despondency or depression or bitterness. God got, he got expectations for you. God, he got thoughts towards you. And he, you going through it now. You going through it. It's hard. Yes, it is. I ain't going to discount that. But take your mind off the hardness of your situation and put your mind on Jesus. Search for him. And seek him. Build houses. Plant gardens. 
Repro well, I ain't gonna tell you to reproduce uh, unless you get, you know you read it. But make sure God telling you to reproduce. But what I'm trying to tell you, God's gonna tell you to be productive even in your trying time. But but the good news is there's an end to all of this. And, and I ain't talking about death. I'm talking about an end to your situation. A, a, a period at the end of this. Matter of fact, an exclamation mark because you're going to have a testimony about how good God is to you. He's going to bring you to the end of it if you continue to trust him. Let him produce in you what he's trying to produce in you. He's got expectations for you. He's going to visit you and he's going to perform his promises in your life. Just continue to trust him. We want to thank God for all of you that uh, took time to uh, study the word of God with us. Uh, if it's God's will, we'll be back here again, 7 o'clock p.m. next Wednesday. And uh, I believe, you know, if it's God's will, that we will continue to uh, video or go live with our Bible study because uh, for those that may not be a member of our church, but, you know, like the teaching and like the fellowship, then we'll continue to go live and uh, video. We we also have a um, YouTube channel, St. Peter Community Church. You can go back and listen to the recordings. But uh, we want to thank God for his spirit. We thank God for his word. We thank God for his favor on our life. Because mm -hmm. we're not here by accident and, and nothing in your life is happening by accident. God got purpose all over you. He got purpose over you. And uh, for, those, for those of you in, uh, uh, all those of you on Facebook, God bless you. We're going to sign out with you all. Um, our prayers are with you all. Be strong in the Lord and um, continue to trust him. He's got you in his mind. God bless you. Amen.